season on MasterChef. Thousands auditioned. You move like a chef, and clearly, you cook like a chef. Oh! But only the best survived. It's a bad dish. You know it, I know it. That has to be the most disgusting soup I've ever tasted. Chef Farouk seems like a fairy tale. Once upon a time starts right now. Now, the final 14 amateur cooks face the toughest culinary challenges of their lives. Ow! Every challenge will get tougher. Who's sourcing the plate? Put it on with some finesse. You've still got food in the oven. I got one. Oh, my God. A nightmare. Oh, by the way, it's cooked perfectly. My cupcake is horrible. It looks like a walk through a crime scene. If that's raw, we cannot taste this dish. And eliminations will begin. Please take off your apron. Please take off your apron. Your time is done. Your time in MasterChef is done. To survive, they will have to battle through blood, sweat, and tears. You've never killed a crab or never. a lobster? This is the problem. While others will try out the phenomenal dishes. It's cooked perfectly. <laughs> This is really MasterChef level. These talented home cooks risked it all to pursue their passion. I've always had this killer passion for cooking. This is my dream, and I'm not letting anybody stand in my way. I want this title of America's first master chef. Who gives up their life as a doctor? I walked away from a six-figure salary in finance for this opportunity. I had to leave behind my three beautiful babies to come out here. They'll have to face three of the toughest figures in the culinary world. I'm Graham Elliott from Chicago. At 27, I became America's youngest four-star chef. Believe me, I know a thing or two about cooking and eating. My name is Joe Bastianich. I own 20 of America's best restaurants and three award-winning Italian wineries. And of course, there's me, Gordon Ramsay. I have 28 restaurants worldwide, and no one knows more about food than I do. You guys pulled it off. Well done. Thank you, chef. One of these amateur cooks will take home $250,000. A cookbook deal. Ten. We gotta put it in. Nine. And become the eight, first American seven, to go from home six, cook. Five. Eight, here we go. Ten, three. Two, to master chef. One. And stop. Yeah! After three grueling weeks, 14 of the best amateur cooks in the country are about to discover the difference between cooking at home and competing on the highest culinary stage. As they enter the MasterChef kitchen for the very first time. Walking into the MasterChef kitchen was amazing. When we walked into that fully stocked professional kitchen, it was incredible. I was like, oh, I'm in heaven. I mean, I'm just a small town girl, and when we first got in the kitchen, definitely from thinking of my kitchen at home, I mean, it was amazing. Welcome to Master of Kitchen, the crown of America's first ever master chef, plus a quarter of a million dollars, and your very own cookbook will be won or lost inside here! <laughs> Find your stations quickly. Let's go! Clearly, there's an apron behind each station with your names on it. When I get to my station, I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is nuts. I've arrived. I'm in my element. You've got the state-of-the-art kitchen, a Viking range, but let's be honest, it's not the tools that are going to make America's first ever master chef. It's how you use them. Now, we have an amazing test. In front of you all is the mystery box. In this challenge, the contestants have to prepare, cook, and present one stunning dish using nothing more than the ingredients hidden inside the box. They can use as many or as few ingredients as they wish but they must present it to the judges in just 45 minutes. Now, we'll select three stunning dishes. Out of those three dishes, we'll nominate one winning dish. Now, the person with the best dish out of those three will get to pick the main ingredient in our next test later today. Now, 
here's the bad news. All of you, listen. Make this count, because eliminations are just around the corner. <sighs> oh, ho, ho. On the count of three, lift those boxes. One. Two. Three. Oh. Nice. nice. Now, you have a double cut pork chop. Wonderful bunch of flat leaf parsley, cabbage, the most amazing chipata bread, a delicious Granny Smith apple, beautiful lemon, beautiful vine tomatoes, and then alongside that, you have a little bottle of cognac. And just for that sweet tooth, cinnamon and chocolate. You've all got 45 minutes. 14 ingredients. Use as many or as little as you wish. Your time starts now. If there's one ingredient you wouldn't use in there, what would it be? It would be the chocolate. The chocolate, for sure. Well, the chocolate is the devil of the box. Yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll tempt you, take you down yeah. the wrong path. Yeah, right. I'm making uh, sort of a rustic kind of pork chop uh, that we're going to uh, sear off and uh, fry in the pan, plate it over some uh, wilted cabbage and a little apple compote on the side, yeah? I'm making a sweet pork chop uh, with a cognac flambe uh, and a side of cabbage slaw and tomato concasse. My biggest concern, I think, though, is overcooking the pork. I'm making a bread pudding, a 21st century bread pudding. A 21st century bread pudding? Yeah. So you're doing a chocolate bread pudding? Yes, yes I am. OK. And I'm excited because it's really coming out of here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sauce to go with it. Right. The secret behind a really good chocolate bread pudding pudding is the texture in the side, not allowing it to become too dry. That's right. It's be nice and moist. That's, it has to be moist. Yes. an amazing list of ingredients yeah. there. What would you do? I think the first thing I'd do is kind of break down mentally the time I have. I'd mm -hmm. spend 20 minutes on prep, 20 yeah. minutes on cooking, and five minutes on yeah. plating. This right. type of a challenge, they really have to be thinking about what they're going to put on the plate, what's going to catch our eye. Because yeah, yeah. it's not just about flavor no. now, it's also about what, what yeah. really delivers the message of yeah. the plate. Sheena, what exactly are you making? I'm making a chocolate mousse that has a little bit of brandy in it. Um, I'm going to top it with some candied lemon peel, and I'm thinking of making a caramel if I have time. Just okay. a little drizzle, a little bit of that on okay. top. Okay, great. You know what? Chocolate mousse is uh, is one of my favorites, so oh, looking forward to trying it. When I discovered cooking, I found that there is something that I do have a passion for. The ultimate goal is to not feel like I'm going to work every day, to feel like I'm doing what I want to do. I don't want to boost your confidence here irrationally, but those look like pretty good pork chops. I've never cooked this before, and uh -huh. so I really wanted to try to Where's, make sure that... You've never cooked a pork chop in your entire life? Where are you from? From Mississippi, but we don't what? do pork. Come on, I don't do pork. No. Well, why did you go with that? Why didn't you do something that you know? Because Stick I really want to challenge myself, and that's what this whole competition is about, is using the skills you have and do it with anything that you're given. Okay, first off, my scariest dish, uh, Jenna's. She's making a sandwich. We do a sandwich with leftover pork. Yeah, I heard her say that she's doing a ham sandwich. There's no ham anywhere in there. Just because it's right. pork, it's not ham. No, no, no. nothing of sort. Yeah, nothing. I have to say, Whitney, for having never cooked a pork chop, has some excellent technique, and the pork chops look really good. Yeah, David Miller. I mean, he's looking calm, composed. Yes. He's got more confident and less arrogant. Right. And what yeah. he's done is caramelizing these apples in with the pork. He's making right. a light sauce. Uh, he's boiling the cabbage, frying the cabbage. Clever. She is working on a chocolate mousse, and then you've got uh, Avis making a bread pudding, so I'm really yeah. interested in people that decided to on the leave the savory world yeah. and start working on some sweets. Yeah. All right, guys, less than 15 minutes left. Hopefully I'm, I'm remembering my recipe right. Oh, it smells wonderful. All right, guys, 10 minutes. Woo. I've never been classically trained. This is, this is just raw talent. This is my dream. This is something I've always wanted to do, and I'm not letting anybody stand in my way. Whatever my hands touch will win me this competition. I will be the first master chef in the United States.
I think that when you get people in the room that are just super passionate like I am and super intense and ready to go, it elevates everybody's game, you know? Last two minutes. The judges will only taste the three most enticing dishes. So these final seconds of plating and presentation are crucial. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Stop, stop. In each mystery box challenge, the judges will taste just three dishes. The winner of this challenge will have a huge advantage going into the next round. The first dish that we're going to taste that is in the top three. Sheena. A cognac flavored chocolate mousse. The pork chop is obviously the most important thing in the box. It's the protein. So I kind of knew that everyone else was going to use it, and I was taking a huge risk by deciding not to. Why a dessert? I thought that you'd be eating a lot of pork, and you might want to take a little break from the saltiness with a little bit of sweet. A cognac flavored chocolate mousse finished with candied lemon peel. Texture is amazing. Smooth, creamy, sumptuous, but more importantly, incredibly daring. And this time, it worked. Good job. Thank you. You followed the devil in the box, except you achieved redemption. But this is a dish that I would be proud and happy to charge $10 for. Congratulations. Thank you, babe. So the second contestant, who's going to be one of our top three, utilized not just the pork, but kept it in its natural state as the double pork chop. And that person is... Jake. Hot day. Well done. Woo! Good job. At some point, you gotta wake up and do something exciting that you're really passionate about. Make no mistake, I am here to become a chef. I am here to be the master chef. Thanks, Grim. Way to go, boss. Thank you. I think that, you know, if you look at this, this pork, it is gorgeous. The bones are nice and clean. It's beautifully cooked. You can just tell by, by feeling it with a touch. cabbage almost has a melting texture to it you know it's got a great consistency there's some good flavor there really a uh, hard thing to do with 45 minutes not to want to butterfly that pork it's very risky I mean it's one of the first things that you have to get going right away you did it really well thank you okay sure. and there's something really nice about the way you work I expect you to be clumsy you build office blocks you're on construction sites for God's sake so you walk around a kitchen with great finesse. It's like watching a, a swan glide across a pond. It's unique. A big swan. <laughs> mm. It's seasoned beautifully. Thank you. Yeah, my big question, is it good enough to win today's challenge? However, job well done. Thank you. Thank you. The last dish was a dish that was minimalistic, but instead of three or four or five different ingredients on the plate, only two elements were in this plate. My dish, I think as a whole, really plays to what these guys are looking for. It's better than a one in five chance that I'm gonna be in the top three. But I think that you are onto something. Whitney, congratulations. Please bring it up. Flavor-wise, yes, I knew I was spot on. I'm definitely ready, and I'm here to prove to them that, you know, I could do this. I could be Master Chef.
never cooked pork before, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Can Whitney's first ever pork dish impress a master chef judge? You've nailed it. It's, it's a gorgeous, moist pink color inside. The slaw is more of a southern style where it's a little sweeter. And they just balance so well that this dish is something I'd love to serve in a restaurant. Thank you. There's not a lot on this plate. So if you're going to put two or three things on there, it has to be absolutely on the money. It's cooked perfectly. There are chefs that spend years trying to get a natural feel. So are you instinctive or are you just a lucky young girl? That's what I cannot determine right now. I know I'm not just lucky because I cook all the time. And so I definitely know I have what it takes. Do you go for the rustic charm? Do you go for the finesse? Do you go for the sweet tooth? It's, it's a tough call. OK. And now, from 14 dishes, we've got these three stunning dishes. Are we going for a sweet tooth with a chocolate mousse? Are we going for the sort of rustic charm, playing to your strengths and building an amazing dish? Or are we going for something that you would imagine that would fit comfortably in any restaurant outside of this room? And the winning dish, congratulations. We've narrowed it down to three stunning dishes. Are we going for a sweet tooth with a chocolate mousse? My presentation was elegant. I'm feeling pretty good. Are we going for the rustic charm, playing to your strengths and building an amazing dish? I want to win every challenge, every time we step up and compete against each other. Or are we going for something that would fit comfortably in any restaurant? In my mind, there was no way it was not going to win. Sheena, Whitney, Jake, congratulations. Whitney, well done. Good job. I won this challenge. This means the world. I was speechless. Right now, I think everybody's kind of looking at her like, watch out. Watch out, because Whitney's coming. Whitney's weaknesses is that she's young. She hasn't been outside of her hometown. And I think that's going to hurt her in the end. So congratulations, Whitney. Not only are you going to pick the ingredient for the next challenge, you are going to have the luxury of spending five minutes by yourself in the pantry. Everybody else gets half that time. And you're going to be in there as the entire group. This next challenge, there will be an elimination at stake. Whitney, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, yeah Whitney. Whitney. Whitney now has a huge advantage as she gets to pick the main ingredient that everybody else must cook with. What she cannot control is the theme of the challenge. That is in the hands of the judges. The most amazing herbs, the most amazing vegetables. Once she selected her main ingredient, Whitney will have five minutes alone in the MasterChef pantry. The remaining contestants will only have half that time. The theme of today's invention test, Chinese. Ever cooked Chinese food before? No. Growing up in South Mississippi, I don't make Chinese. I mean, I don't even really know what ingredients, what oils to use, so I was clearly, like, lost. We have three stunning ingredients. The first ingredient is... the most amazing Chinese mushrooms, from shiitake to oyster, enoki. They are phenomenal. Let's see what's under number two. Mandarin oranges. They're sweet, they're sour, they're delicious, delicious, delicious product. The last ingredient is duck. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like, I haven't even had a Chinese dish that had duck in it. So it definitely threw me for a loop. Bear in mind. You select one ingredient, everybody else follows. Mm -hmm. So are you going to be cooking to your strengths, mm -hmm. or are you going to be cooking to their weaknesses? Mm -hmm. 
You got to start thinking smart, playing strategic. I'm gonna go with. Oh boy. The main ingredient that Whitney's chosen is mandarin oranges. Yes! Woo! That's right, mandarin oranges. The theme is Chinese. Everything you pick up and put in that basket, think Chinese, through and through. I was very excited. I know I have an advantage over the other contestants who probably had only like fast food Chinese. The extent of my knowledge of Chinese food is like bell peppers and onions, soy sauce. Yeah, I find out it's Chinese, and I'm actually excited. I'm happy. I'm really happy. The problem is, I don't know how to make the perfect Chinese dish. Two and a half minutes starts from now. Off we go. With Chinese cuisine as the theme of this invention test, many contestants find themselves in foreign territory. I am totally out of my element. I don't even eat Chinese food that often, but I'm kind of excited about that because it's a chance for me to try out some new ingredients, take some risks, and kind of step out of my comfort zone. Now, really seriously, push it to the extreme. The challenge is all about Chinese. I want to see these across the dish. You've got one hour. Starting from now, off you go. Get in the Chinese ball, baby, come on. There is going to be elimination on the back of this dish. Oh, my God. Got it. A lot of sizzle, Jenna. What's going on? Uh, Asian orange stir fry. Chicken breast with uh, eggplant bok choy and mandarin oranges. Um, I'm going to do a kind of a, a ginger orange chicken in a hoisin sauce. Um, I'm going to do that with some Chinese vegetables, and I'm going to put that over a little vermicelli noodle. Uh, survival is the key. I mean, right now I'm focused on just not having the worst dish. I've decided to cook a Mandarin Chinese salad. Looking around, I see that everyone is sort of doing the exact same sort of cliche stir fry with some Mandarin oranges on top. And I'm feeling kind of good about my rest. There's no confidence. Nobody, no, is, nobody is in there saying, no, this dish no. is going to rule. This is incredible. No. They're saying, I hope it's not in the bottom three. Yeah. The, the attitude that I surveyed is just one of survival. I don't think anyone is using this challenge really yeah. as an opportunity to rise to the top or yeah. try to win. That smells right. That's good. It'd be interesting to see with the people who are not familiar with this cuisine, yeah. how they will interpret it. Let's go. Uh, Whitney, what are you cooking? I'm cooking a mandarin chicken and a vegetable stir fry. Have a look around. Yeah, in front and behind, everyone's cooking. Mandarin orange, because you chose that. You put everyone on the back foot with these mandarin oranges, yeah? Are you feeling confident at this stage? Are you going to win this one? Uh, I'm not feeling as confident as I was in the last challenge. We got some star anise, some cloves, some fennel seed, some allspice, some mustard seed. It's all about the sauce. The sauce is going to make me a break. Right, Mike, what are you doing? We put Tim Fall underneath the chicken. Yeah, just it's just to kind of lift up, lift up the breast, just to get the skin side touching the, the oil a little bit. Yeah, I've never done it, but I'm gonna try it out, Chef. Yeah, why would want... you want to try it out on a day like today, in amongst this kind of competition? Well, it's about, about getting better, and I don't want to yeah. just do the same old thing. So, so it's to get the skin. Yeah, just just getting the skin without having all that weight on there, and then of course I'll take it off later and then finish it up. How are you incorporating the mandarin oranges across this dish? I'm gonna make a sauce basically mm -hmm. uh, from it okay. and have it glazed over over it all. Right, Slim. Yes, what chef. are you doing? I am doing Chinese herb boiled chicken with um, some ginger anise. Yeah. So you're poaching the chicken in the broth? Yes. Farouk, you got a lot of stuff going on here. Do you feel confident? I, I'm, I'm starting to lose confidence a little bit because things aren't coming together the way I wanted to. That's we know people are going to be eliminated with this challenge. So yes, yes, yes. It's got to be Chinese, got to yes. be delicious, and most importantly, it's got to be done. This is my carrot. I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, go ahead on and just, you know, cook my... Boiled carrots. Doesn't no. sound very Chinese. No, I'm going to take and stir fry my carrots. Stir fry And I don't want them to be too hard, so I want to make sure they're the right texture. <laughs> hey, ooh, okay. Sharon has some heat in his dish. That was yeah. the only one that I really slim. tasted. It has a nice Slim has fragrance. a lot. Very, yeah. very yeah. different. Yeah. Slim, slim mm -hmm. smells like you stepped into an Asian yeah. Yeah. household. Yeah. Yeah. Close your eyes and wow, yeah. a great vapor. The weak ones for me so far. Avis looks like she's panicking, and it shows in terms of what she's put together. Yes. Big China trouble in Little China. Mmm, 
Jungle Force. Whitney's disintegrating in terms of confidence. The dish doesn't look that comprehensive. It doesn't strike me as Chinese. And this was her competition. Right. She put everyone on the back foot, so right. she should be in front. Jenna's already played it with 20 minutes left to cook. That's crazy. So there's a lot going on here. There's some yeah. people going home today. This is high stakes, so yeah. it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Not having the opportunity to choose the main ingredient, it's nerve-wracking because it's not in your hands and you don't know what to do. And it's even crazier, I think. It's, I think it's, I think, crazier than the first challenge because this is an elimination. I want it so bad now. I want it so bad. This thing is it's real. This is not a game. Ten minutes left. Nobody can hide in this challenge because we're tasting everybody's dish. Taste, taste, taste. Once I got here, it was a dream come true. And I'm not about to let that dream die. It's really heartbreaking to see somebody go home, but at the end of the day, this is a competition. And I need to see every single person go home and be the last man standing. I definitely don't feel like I have an advantage at this point. This dish could definitely be something that could send me home. Ten, nine, eight, seven. I love you, Whitney, but you better go down. It's my turn to shine. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Stand back from your station. One, and stop. Stand back from your station. Well done. Understand what's at stake here, guys, yeah? After we've tasted all these 14 dishes, we'll then select the bottom three, then the elimination, and start. Let's go, Whitney. As the winner of the mystery box, Whitney's reward was to choose the main ingredient for this second challenge. With that huge advantage, Whitney is under added pressure to deliver. I was the one that got to have five minutes in the pantry, get to choose the main ingredient. To be in the bottom three would just be devastating to me. Uh, wow. Is that it? Appetizer or entree or a little in-between thing? Uh, I guess just a small portion entree. It's a mandarin orange chicken with stir-fried vegetables. It's a little TV dinner stir-fry with bits of chicken that the dog didn't want to eat. I just hope that the person who picked the key ingredient of the day doesn't wind up in the bottom three. This girl had an advantage over me. She had extra time. She, she got to choose the ingredient. And I was just like, wow, she really doesn't know what she's doing right now. I'm totally better than Whitney at this point. Next up, Slim. Let's go. Explain the dish. This is um, Chinese spiced chicken with mandarin orange sauce. done this dish an injustice. Where's that delicious broth that you cooked the chicken in? It's still in the pot. Bring me a cup of broth now. Good chef. Quickly. <laughs> oh man, I screwed up. <laughs> I went for the rice and I screwed up. In my kitchen, we would spend six to eight hours trying to get a stock like that. You've done it in one hour, and you didn't serve it. Are you crazy? Thank you, chefs. Slim and I are the same age, and we're pretty much on the same playing field. I mean, I think my food is probably tastes better than hers, but that's just my opinion. Avis, let's go. 
Malaysia. Is that a dish to be proud of in the 21st century? Yes, it is. Orange chicken, and then underneath the chicken, we have some Chinese noodles under there. It looks like a sort of little chicken noodle vegetable dinner from a gas station. Now, I don't see the authenticity of a unique Chinese delicious dish. My heart just fell because I had a gut feeling that that dish had put me off the competition. Next up, Tony. So far, the dishes have failed to impress. Can things get better from here? It's a wok fried chicken with some stir fried broccoli. I don't know, it doesn't look like a Chinese dish to me. It's like kid food. It tastes like chicken nuggets soaked in orange juice. David! Spicy orange chicken with steamed vegetables and rice. Dave, is that how you wanted the plate to come out? Uh, I'm not disappointed with the way it looks. I'm not impressed visually. I think it looks almost kind of cartoonish. Shit out, please. Let's go. Pan fried chicken and bok choy egg rolls. So I think that the colors is really kind of a little bit unappealing. And then you go, uh-oh. Knock, knock. Nobody's home. Empty. Right. Jenna, let's go. The big question I want to ask you is, you place it up with 20 minutes to go. Right. And food dies as it sits in the window, clearly. And that had better taste phenomenal to put it up with 20 minutes to go. It's basically an orange chicken with the snap peas with the orange infused rice. This is the problem with this whole round. It's boring. It's, it's, it's not the spirit of what we came here to do. And if you don't want to deliver on the highest level, if you want to play the game and be safe, you're not going to win this thing. <sighs> this is Master Chef. We're trying to find the best amateur chef in America. Who's here to do that? The challenges are not going to get easier. So get ready to bring it, bring it 100%. And if you're not, you should probably just leave your apron and check yourself out right now because this is getting frustrating. This is the problem with this whole round. It's boring. It's, it's, it's not the spirit of what we came here to do. And if you don't want to deliver on the highest level, if you want to play the game and be safe, you're not going to win this thing. Once my Chinese dish didn't impress, I was definitely questioning my ability in the kitchen. I have three beautiful children that are missing me, and I miss them, and it's killing me to be away. Is this what I want? Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Tracy, bring us something to at least make us feel good, please. Right. It's a mandarin and orange glazed chicken with Chinese vegetables over the vermicelli egg noodles. Can Tracy change the mood in the kitchen? I love the fact that the vegetables seem as important as the chicken. All those things seem like they're equal and It's a good tasting dish. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy. Looks authentic. The vegetables are cooked with care and they taste delicious. Good job. If I hear Chef Ramsay say, well done, then to me, that, that's good. That was a great sign. Really good. So I was like, yes. 
churn. Let's go, please. It's uh, crispy mandarin sesame chicken and then uh, the fresh mandarin to go along with the vegetables. So it's a very bold move to slice a chicken breast and then encrust it and then cook it again. It could be overcooked. Dangerous game, especially when you slice chicken so thinly. Yeah. You've been daring. The chicken is cooked absolutely perfectly. Really good. Thank you. That's nowhere near the bottom three. That's heading towards the top three. Good job. Thank you. Really good job. Okay, Sheena, let's go. In our last challenge, you were so courageous, you made the most amazing chocolate mousse. This time, have you played safe or have you played dangerous? I think pretty bold. Pretty bold? Yes. Other times when I've walked up with my plate, I've been a little bit, like, timid. But this time, I have taken some chances. It's bold. It's amazing. I wanted to do a salad, um, and then I finished it with a sauce that features a mandarin orange as well. So from here, visually, it looks like a fruit salad. That can be put together domestically in five minutes. What were you doing for the other 55 minutes of the challenge? The sweetness of the leeks. You caramelize the leeks in sugar. because It's like they've been dipped in honey. Uh, the jury's out on this one. I, 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 for the first time in a long time, I'm shocked. Let's go. Farouk. After Sheena's bad dish, can Farouk's plate take him to safety? We have stuffed chicken with Chinese vegetables, bok choy, I put a mandarin orange in there, also with mandarin poison sauce. Turn my mouth into a, a desert. It's dry. That is about as Chinese as my mum. And she's from Glasgow in Scotland. In my mind, it's definitely in the bottom three. After I heard you definitely in the bottom three, I mean, it's almost like somebody telling you you got 24 hours to live. Right, last but not least, Mike, let's go. What I have here is a nutty orange chicken breast with um, peanuts and cashews, green bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, and onion. So we've got crispy skin inside, a succulent, moist, hopefully, chicken. I have one huge problem with this dish. I don't want to stop eating it. It's delicious. Well done. I'm on the top of the world. I'm just, I'm like, oh my God. Like, really? Really? <laughs> Amazing. Do you agree? Uh-huh. Okay. We've deliberated. Joe, Graham, and myself, we did see some stunning dishes, but there was one dish across the 14 that was head and shoulders above everybody else's and that individual managed to take it to an extraordinary level i look at my plate and i'm more than happy i'm proud of it there is no way that i'm not going to win this thing i was standing there with my fingers crossed behind my back like pick me pick me and that person is mike well done. Woo! Come here. Come here. Come over. This can't be happening. It's just too sweet, too 
juicy, too, you know, succulent to be happening right now. Right. Time for the first elimination inside our kitchen. We're going to take the bottom three dishes. The first worst dish of the Chinese challenge, Farouk. Let's go. I'm 43 years of age. I've been cooking for 25 of those years. I've never been to any Chinese restaurant with a pounded chicken breast, stuffed, rolled, boiled, dried, and dumped on top of a plate. The second person up for elimination. Shreedan. Although I appreciate the thought that went into what you tried to achieve, it was kind of like a salad gone bad. Third person joining Farouk and Sheena. There was me one more person. I could just see my name being called. And I was just praying, don't let me be in the bottom three. Avis, please step forward. There was a lack of integrity across the dish. Nothing authentic whatsoever. Right. The person leaving MasterChef is... In my head, I'm praying and I'm saying, God, please let me be given one more chance. Avis, I'm sorry, my darling. Your time is done inside MasterChef. Avis, you've got such heart and soul that you put into your food, Don't which stop. is inherent in cooking. Please stay with it and please stay on the path. This experience has been like none other. It's seasoned beautifully, and I want more. My cooking dream is still alive. It's not dead. This competition has ended for me, but it hasn't ended my dream. Sheena, Farouk, here's the bad news. We're not done yet. One more of you will be leaving. Twist, twist, twist. The judges say, oh, we're going to eliminate somebody else. And I'm like, what? Then the judges say they're cutting one more. That's when I knew I was toast. It was a wrap for me. I was not going to be able to move on. We're judging you both entirely on this last round. I was worried again. Extremely worried, actually. The next person leaving the MasterChef kitchen is Sheena. Please take off your apron and leave the MasterChef kitchen. What? What? You, young lady, are a shiny example to everybody else in this competition. Your chocolate mousse was outstanding. But keep cooking, keep learning. You're a smart cookie, That's bright girl, and you'll go a long way. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sheena. Thank Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think that it was the right decision to let me go so fast, especially on that challenge. Rupo? Rupo. If I were able to stay, I would have done some really cool things. What? When I heard them call Sheena's name, I couldn't believe it. I probably should be going home right now. Farouk, you were so close to leaving MasterChef this evening because it was substandard. And there is something inside you that we all see. Now, continue taking the risks, but tread cautiously because we're watching you like a hawk. It really struck a chord when Gordon said, we all see something in you. This is definitely a wake-up call. I got so close to losing, and I don't ever want to be in that position again. Let's go! Next time, with two more cooks out of the competition, the remaining 12 are about to be split into opposing teams. Come on, guys, blue team, let's go! There must be 150 Marines yeah. in that queue.
for a challenge on a scale they've never known. Oh my gosh. From the bottom of all of our hearts, we apologize. The team who loses will face an elimination taste test. Where one more contestant's dream of becoming America's first master chef will come to a bitter end.